Okay, so today it's time for species profile number two, which is on the paradise fish, Macropotus opercularis. Uh, paradise fish generally grow between about two and a half to three and a half inches long. So like this guy right here is about two and a half inches, but he's still grown. And that's standard length, so it's not including their tail. And uh, some of the largest males will get to four inches. And um, they're a fairly easy sex. I got two males in here. Their sexing is similar to that of the Siamese fighting fish. Females got short fins, they're less colorful. The females also got less stripes, and they tend to have a chubby body. And another difference is that when you look at the facial profile, the females have pointier jaws with less prominent lips and a not so wide mouth. So, one thing about the paradise fish is they're, they range from a temperate climate to a tropical climate. So, these guys live in China where it actually gets cold in the winter time and they survive more and it's as low as 5 degrees but do that they must be acclimatized to it very gradually but they also live in areas like Thailand where the water gets to over 30 degrees so this is a fish that you can keep in your house well here fairly easily now as for uh, tank size I would say probably 20 actually maybe a 20 gallon would probably be fine for an adult paradise fish, depending on what type of tank mates it's got. And one thing to keep about mind about them is that if you keep them with two fish that are too small, they will eat them. And one thing that happened uh, a few weeks ago here was I put say I just put like a female guppy in here that was say an inch and a half long, and the paradise fish tried to eat it. You know it is significantly smaller than the guppy, and I caught the guppy, put it back. Rescued the guppy, put it back in the air tank, and then gave it away to my friend later on. So, you don't want to keep them with fish that are that much smaller than them just because you might eat them. Even if the fish is too large for them to swallow. And um, one thing that's kind of interesting about them is they got these two color morphs that occur in nature. You got ones that are red with blue stripes, and ones that are blue with red stripes. And they always have a red tail, and most for the majority the fins are also red also but one thing that's interesting is the two different color morphs I would hypothesize have something to do with camouflage because when you look at the counter shading the blue morph has gray counter shading on the top and the red morph has brown counter shading on the top so why I think that is is that since they are known to live in either uh, streams or in like bogs and ponds I just think one color gets selected for in ponds and bogs and like swamps and stuff while another color gets selected for in streams so these are not subspecies they're not distinct from each other they just have different colors because of different selective pressures and uh, okay um, I guess I talked about feeding they eat pretty much anything bad pellets, shrimp pellets Small grade cichlid pellets, flakes, whatever you know it, they'll eat pretty much anything. But beware, they're mostly a carnivore, so you gotta keep their diet high protein, or else their bodies will just get screwed up. And um, one thing that's complex about them is their aggression. For example, these two males right now are getting along, but it's, I think it's just because the red male is bigger than the blue male, or maybe they did fight and I just didn't notice it, and the red male seems to have become dominant or something like that. But um, if you're going to keep two males together, make sure your tank is at least 48 inches long or else one male is going to end up dead. Simple like that. They're almost as aggressive towards each other as the bay of fish in some instances. But um, you can keep more than one male in your tank as long as you got over 48 inches of tank space. And um, one thing about them is they're very comparable to the beta in a lot of aspects. They have the labyrinth organ, they're in the same family, they can tolerate smaller containers, which I don't think is good for them, but so if you want to keep a paris fish alone, I'd say a five gallon tank would be adequate, especially a longer five gallon, because they seem to swim around quite a bit more in the beta. And um, when keeping them with tank mates, bigger tanks would be better, so I'd say a 30 gallon tank would be best and one thing to keep in mind would be I'd say avoid small fish like uh, neons uh, white clouds and stuff like that you know I had this guy in a community tank in a five gallon with the zebra danos and cherry barbs he was much smaller back then now he's quite a bit larger and I think if he saw fish like that he'd try to eat them so 
I'd say keep them with fish that are about their size, or at least two thirds their size, so they can't eat them or attempt to eat them. So I'd say the paradise fish is a great fish, but you gotta keep in mind they can be pretty aggressive. I've seen paradise fish take on the firemouth cichlid and win. I've seen them take on the spotted grammy and win. I've seen one basically like attack another fish and kill it. So. Parry fish, all right fish, can be peaceful to very aggressive, just like the bay of fish, but usually they're semi-aggressive fish, and they're an all right community fish. They'd be great for a Grammy tank, great for a um, cold water tank. So um, if you're into Grammys and you don't want a beta, or if you want something that's just be kept alone, and if you don't want to buy a heater, get a paradise fish. You'll enjoy it. Remember, use a lid. They like to jump a lot too. So thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.